So last time, we were about to surgically insert ourselves into this encampment by abusing the level 100 sneak skill built into our character. Pick up this item which will add more details to your map. Make sure you take out the guards with horns first. They're the ones that will call for reinforcements when you get spotted. Even if some of them get a bit sus, it's fine because like I said, you have level 100 sneak skill. Backstab some more guards. Open the chests behind the two giant carriages located at the left corners of the ruins. One near the gate and one on the other side. I'd recommend starting from the grace and then backstabbing every guard from the left, then make your way towards the right. The second guy with the horn should be standing near the entrance on the right side, so taking his fat ass out should put you in the clear. There'll be a few dogs on this side of the map, which is also near the basement, but you can just gun them down or sneak up on them one by one. Be careful not to attract the bats though, they're really annoying to deal with. Finish off the last few guards, it shouldn't matter if you somehow bother them, cause by this point, most of them would already be dead. Go down the stairs, open the door, open the chest and grab yourself a whetstone knife and your first ashes of war. Ashes of war are straight up the best things they've added in the game, since not only can you pick and choose what weapon art you want, but it also makes enchanting insanely accessible. Once you get back up the stairs, all you have to do is clean up the rest of the ruins. If you haven't already, the biggest challenge in this place is the one with the lance and great shield. You can easily sneak up on him for a free backstab. Obviously he's gonna be tankier than the rest and definitely more challenging than that boss earlier. But if you're patient with your attacks, unlike me, you can easily punish him every time you bait out an attack. Once you're done with him, you've pretty much cleared this area. Feel free to mark out your map however you want to indicate which ruins or dungeons you've cleared out. Now moving towards the western part of the map, you'll see another grass nearby, where you can rest up if you need to. Moving further along, you'll hear someone calling out to you, asking for your help. Could you help us out, Cully? All you have to do is roll into these bushes, which will reveal Bach, the friendly rat man. He'll thank you for helping him out and give you some shrooms before telling you about a cave off the coast of Limgrave. After that, we'll take a bit of a detour along the left side. Follow the cliffside until you see a bunch of fallen monsters monuments, which is where another encampment is located. You don't need to kill anyone. The important thing here is the crafting recipe. Just collect as much recipes as you can throughout the game, cause you'll never know when you need something from them. Now backtracking towards the bridge, if it's night time, then a night cavalry boss will control the area. I'd say just ignore him for now and kill this roly poly, which is this game's version of a crystal lizard. There's a variety to these things, and this one drops another ash of war, while some replenish his flasks. Try to make your way down the cliff, and appreciate nature's beauty by petting the local dogs. After showing affection to the doggos, keep riding on past the bridge and hug the left. At some point, you'll see enough smoke that you think, damn, Detroit is getting better. Either that or Snoop's nearby. Make your way towards the smoke and you'll be invaded by an NPC because he thinks you're trying to steal his weed. Walk back out in the open and you should see the man running towards you. Make sure he stands up to assert your dominance and because he's an early game NPC, you can pretty much monkey brain his ass until he uses his one and only flask. The only thing you have to worry about this dude is his dagger's range attack which can potentially one shot you this early in the game. Oh and his dagger also has bleed. At some point in the fight, you'll hear a Batman sounding orc talking mad shit. Then this ronin looking motherfucker runs in to help. After gangbanging the invader, Miyamoto Musashi decides to dip. But if you ride farther down the stream, you should see him standing at the right side of the cave. He'll pretty much say, welcome new guy. Invader's bad, dragon's bad. Okay, bye. Afterwards, you can ride back into the cave. After touching the cave grass, slowly crouch walk your way until you see some bushes, where you'll see a bandit running back and forth. Be careful moving forward, cause there's some tripwires, which can alert everyone if you're not careful. When the coast is clear, go between the two tripwires into the other bush. There's there's gonna be a tunnel to the right, which leads to a boss room. The boss won't appear until you open this chest. Once you open this chest, you'll then be interrupted by an old friend. Just help yourself to a man's personal belongings. You scheming little thief. Patches still has the same great shield and spear combo, which is a lot easier to deal with since you can spam jumping attacks. His only other gimmick is his breath attack, which is really easy to dodge and punish. Once you get him to about a quarter health, he'll then stop and beg for mercy. You can spare him if you want, or... <laughs> Once you ended his misery, you'll gain his entire set which is actually pretty cool looking. You'll also get his bell which we'll talk about later, and his spear which is already at a plus 7. It has low stat requirements and a decent scaling for decks, making it one of the best early game weapons you can get. You can clear out the rest of the cave if you want, which really isn't much since it's just a few more bandits and one other room, which happens to contain the source of all the smoke we saw earlier. Once you're finished, head back to where you were talking to Mr. Ronin Man. Instead, you'll find some jellyfish. 
Look at the cute little jellyfish. Keep going down the river, past the tornado, until you hit one of these double doors. This is one of the many catacombs you'll find in the game. Once you open the door and touch the grass, you're free to clear it out or come back later. I'm not gonna cover all the dungeons in the game, only the ones that may be important. Once you come back out, summon Torrent and head to the tornado and jump to boost yourself high up back in the surface. You should land nearby a shack with some grass. Touch that and take a look at the painting. Don't worry, it won't suck you in. You can find these paintings all over the game, and they're essentially a treasure hunt. If you find the place where the painting took place, you'll find some items that may or may not be useless. Once you're done, make your way to this part of the map. After bullying the locals, you'll hear someone asking for help yet again. If you ride up this archway, you'll meet this rich pompous prick, who'll then ask you to clear out his fort for him, cause it was overtaken by Godric's knights. Once you're done talking to this dude, keep going down the road and say hi to the grumpy giant. Make your way into the church. Here, you'll pick up a sacred tear to upgrade your flask, and your wondrous physique, which is a single use consumable item, which can also be refilled. The Wondrous Physique is something you can use to heal and or buff yourself depending on what you put into it. You can customize it while resting on the grass, in which you put two effects of your choice. For now, you start off with a mix that gives back half health. Afterwards, you can now head off to the Fort in Mistwood, where we can get the best dash of war in the game. 